Hi there and welcome to another in our series of uh, short videos looking at aspects of financial markets and financial instability. In this session we're going to look at the work of a particular economist, Hyman Minsky, who came up with the idea of his financial instability hypothesis. And Minsky's life work uh, was to better understand the causes of financial instability, particularly in sophisticated capitalist countries. And his research came into prominence again when the global financial crisis engulfed many countries from 2007 onwards. The essence of the hypothesis is that uh, over periods of lengthy economic prosperity, when incomes are rising and there are more people in work, uh, what tends to happen is that the people working in financial institutions decide to invest in ever riskier assets in search of better returns, higher profits. And that this period of stability and uh, increased leverage in the banking system can make the, the wider economic system much more vulnerable if uh, debt default materialises. So according to Minsky, when bad economic news eventually happens, the financial system is at great risk of being too highly leveraged. In other words, there's too much debt relative to capital and there is a risk of systemic collapse as asset prices such as housing values start falling, people lose their jobs and real incomes go down. So Minsky argues that essentially the financial system in capitalist economies in, is inherently unstable. Let's work through the, the essential arguments that uh, come together to form the Minsky financial instability hypothesis. So take an economy initially that's currently in a phase of, of pretty, pretty robust, pretty strong growth, doing well uh, with low inflation and rising employment. Uh, Minsky calls this the, the period of tranquility. But this country, this economy is doing well, but has debts from previous cycles. So what tends to happen, first of all, is that the strong economic growth increases the profits of commercial banks. They're lending out to businesses and households and they're paying interest and making a profit on their loans. Uh, the economy is growing strongly, so rising incomes and more people who've, who found work helps to make the, the debt that people have taken out more serviceable. So as your income goes up each month, you, you find yourself better able to pay the, the interest on a credit card or the interest on a mortgage or other form of debt. But the crucial point is point three. When an economy is going through a strong growth, growth phase, the lending criteria, the credit criteria that the banks may have used uh, in terms of deciding who to lend to, uh, the lending criteria that was considered prudent in the past, they tend to be relaxed. The banking system becomes a little bit perhaps overconfident in terms of who it lends to. An example of this could be the subprime lending boom in the United States from sort of 2000 onwards. Therefore, point four, uh, there is a significant increase in the supply of credit through new loans and that increases the leverage of the banking system. Leverage is a measure of debt relative to capital. The boom in credit drives growth in the short term. You get a cyclical increase in GDP, but it also causes a significant increase in asset prices, for example, share valuations and particularly property, property prices. Now, this credit boom leads to an increase in household debt to GDP uh, and corporate debt to GDP. And the increased debt to GDP ratio lifts, amplifies the risks for an economy if there is a sudden negative external shock, which brings the growth period to a, to a close. The Minsky hypothesis, the essence of it is that once the system is highly leveraged, once the commercial banking system and the wider financial system has lent out so much money, only a small increase in bad debts can then make the system extremely unstable and at risk. We saw this in the United States. This chart shows the share of non-performing loans held by banks in the United States over a 20-year period. And uh, the period from 95 to 2007, you could argue, is the period of stability or tranquility. Very low level of non-performing loans. And that's a debt on which creditors have not made a payment in more than three months. And look and see what happens in 2007, 1%, 2008 above 2%, and suddenly, before you know it, in 2009 into the recession, 2010, the, the share of non-performing loans in the states rises to above 5%. Well, a low figure compared to Italy and Greece, but compared historically in the United States, a huge figure. That, of course, triggered the, the wave of 
bank losses and bank failures, which we, we know much about. So the Minsky hypothesis is essentially the dangers of system, financial systems overextending themselves, becoming too confident in the upswing phase of a cycle. Here's a nice flow diagram showing the, the credit cycle, if you like, and the upswing of asset prices. So when asset prices, particularly housing, are going up, people have the expectation that those prices will continue to go up. Uh, the banks are making good profits on their mortgage lending. Their confidence is high. Demand for credit is increasing and banks are then more willing to lend because they expect to make higher profits. They relax their credit risks. They relax their lending criteria. That increases the credit supply of credit. And uh, expectations, positive expectations in animal spirits, both on behalf of lender and borrower, lead to a big increase in the supply of credit. The big danger of an upswing is you get a significant oversupply and over demand for credit. But then things can go badly wrong. We then fall into the downswing phase of the asset price cycle. House prices perhaps start to fall. Lenders start getting nervous that some of those mortgage loans will not be repaid. Perhaps they start to call in some loans. We call that a mortgage foreclosure. So the market supply of loans starts to contract and we call that a, a credit crunch. And in a systemic credit crunch, nearly every lender is either stopping or limiting how much they lend both to commercial customers, households and businesses, but also how much they lend to each other in the interbank market. So uh, asset prices falling, non-performing loan percentage goes up as we saw in the States. There's a significant increase in bad debts. Banks have to take a hit, they're making bigger losses, having to write off some debts on their balance sheet. And as a result, they're less willing to lend out. The credit, supply of credit, get squeezed in a credit crunch and as a result there is less money flowing into property and shares and both valuations start to go down. Crucially as bad debts and defaults go up the profits and the capital reserves of the banks take a big hit and indeed many banks may may fail uh, because of insolvency and also because they run out of cash liquidity. The big dangers of a downswing particularly in an over leveraged over borrowed financial system are bankruptcy, default, and a residual debt overhang which hangs over the system for many years. So the Minsky financial hypothesis is uh, financial instability hypothesis. It's an important idea. It's gained in prominence in the last 10 years. It's probably more relevant to developed countries rather than emerging countries. Uh, although people are now looking at China and asking whether or not there's a Minsky moment on the way, perhaps in 2017 or 2018. The lesson from the Minsky hypothesis is that the private sector, commercial banking sector, when it becomes overconfident and extends its loans too readily to people who can't really pay them back, can sow the seeds of a wider systemic instability in the financial system. And ultimately, all of us pay for that.